Well, it's happening. This is what the left and liberals do when they really want to take someone down and destroy their career. They say that they said the no-no word, and we all know what word that is. So let's dive on into this. Producer on The Apprentice claims Donald Trump used the N-word when faced with prospect of a black winner in the show's first season. So the first season was on 20 years ago, and this is just now being brought up. So just based on that, like, come on. <clears throat> Let's get in this article. A producer of The Apprentice claims that Donald Trump used the N-word on the set of The Apprentice that the moment and that the moment was captured on tape. Bill Pruitt, who worked on the first seasons of the NBC reality show, writes in a story on Slate that Trump used the word while dismissing the idea that a black contestant, Kwame Jackson, could be an early winner on the series. There has been there has long been intrigue over the outtakes from the show and the possibility that they contain Trump using the racist phrase. Tom Arnold claimed to have seen a tape and even hosted a reality series of his own, uh, own positioning a hunt for the footage. So there's a tape. Why? And see, this is the thing that gets me. So they'll do anything, anything to take down Trump, right? Anything. Why wouldn't they just release this tape on Twitter, on CNN, on Fox News, anywhere they could to get out there if this was really true? Why hide the tape? That's how you know it's just complete BS. In the slate piece, Pruitt writes that during a discussion with Trump over who should win, Jackson or Bill Raychick, who is white, Trump weighed the choice. According to Pruitt, when informed of the sum of Jackson's attributes, Trump said, yeah, but I mean, would America buy an N-word winning? Come on. Really? Do you really think he said that? Pruitt writes that there was surprise among he and the other producers, but none of us thinks to walk out the door and never return. I still wish I had. Is it because, say, so let's say he did say that word, right? Did you know you walk out because you didn't care that he said that word? Now we're in 2024 where every little thing is an issue. Now you want to um, uh, tell everyone that you're on the good side, that you would never do that. You had no problem with it 20 years ago if it did happen. After shooting the scene where Raychick is favored and wrapping up production, Pruitt wrote, there is no discussion about what Trump said in the boardroom, about how the damning evidence was caught on tape. Nothing happens. Where's the tape? Trump's campaign communications director, Stephen Chang, said in a statement that this is a complete fabricated and bullshit story that was already peddled in 2016. Nobody took it serious then, and they won't now because it's fake news. Now that crooked Joe Biden and the Democrats are losing the election, they are bringing up old fake stories from the past because they are desperate. And I don't think he's too far off there, honestly. I mean, they, they are, especially with the black support, they are struggling with the black support. Um, oh, the, and he said it was brought up in 2016, right? Here is the article in 2016. Is there apprentice footage of Trump saying the N-word? October 9th, 2016. A month before the 2016 election. They're doing the exact same thing. And they didn't have any proof then. They're recycling the same stuff because they're running out of ideas to how, how to stop him. And they're freaking out. 2005 is when this supposedly happened. So almost 20 years ago. And what's funny is, in this article, they say that, I think it's because of an NDA they couldn't. So they said, what could have been far worse turns out to be that Trump's saying N-word, at least according to another television executive who wrote on Twitter that anyone who leaks tapes would have to pay a $5 million leak fee. A $5 million leak fee. And apparently that leak fee is why none of these tapes have ever come to light. 
What kind of BS is that? Let's go back to the original article. And it even says right here. Uh, so after Trump says in 2018, he denied saying this and said there's no tapes of it, right? Next paragraph. Pruitt wrote that he was revealing what he saw on the set now because a highly restrictive and punitive non-disclosure agreement expired this year with the threat of a $5 million fine if he were to violate it. So it's interesting. It's 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 crazy the lengths they will go to try to take this man down. It's insane. And then of course the Biden Harris campaign had to jump on it, right? They they had to do everything they could to uh, try to get the black vote. Because that's really what this is all about. They don't care if Trump's racist or not. They, it's, it's not about that. The liberals, they want to keep power. And how do they keep power? Is having power over minorities. That's the biggest thing. Black people heavily vote Democrat. And if you look at the polling this year, the, Trump is winning the black vote. So you see right here, all these different polls. You have the Quinnipiac, Biden 79, Trump 19. New York Times, Biden 66, Trump 23. CBS, Biden 76, Trump 23. This one's a little, a little bit of an outlier. The rest of these, about Trump's pulling anywhere from about 18 to 23 with the black vote. If you look at this chart, Republican percentage of major party vote. It's funny, they had a big chunk until LGB, LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson came in and just gave them all free money and told them to live off the government. And all of a sudden, they've been voting Democrat ever since then. But look at this. So right now, he's pulling 20, 18 to 23%, right? That's higher than it's been since 1960. The closest to that is 72 with Nixon. And Nixon won almost the whole country then. So that just shows how significant that this section of the vote he has. In 2020, he only got 7%. He's up 10 to 15 points from that. That's a significant chunk. And the, that's why the liberals are freaking out. And that's why they're doing everything they can to pander to black people now. Because it's one, you know, they remember they exist once every four years. So they got to do their typical... Republicans are bad. We're the ones here to help you. And then they do nothing for you. So it's just it's just crazy. And I think like black people are really starting to, to see through this stuff. They just they're not falling for their games anymore. They're not falling for all the BS that the liberals do where they try to act like they care and they don't. You know, and he's he's given this speech, Moorhead College. And he's basically telling them all they're victims. Give it a play. Today. You missed your high school graduation. You started college just as George Floyd was murdered. And there was a reckoning on race. It's natural to wonder if democracy you hear about actually works for you. What is democracy? If black men are being killed in the street, what is democracy? The trail of broken promises still leave black, black communities behind. What is democracy? You have to be 10 times better than anyone else to get a fair shot. And most of all, what does it mean, as we've heard before, to be a black man who loves his country, even if it doesn't love him back in equal measure? That is crazy. He's basically telling all those black people that they're victims, that America doesn't love them, that they have to work 10 times as hard as a white person, which if you really want to get into that, I will say if you grow up in a poor community, there, there, there's this thing where the, the, the liberals want like equal outcome for everyone, right? That's the whole idea of like socialism. Everyone has the same outcome no matter what. You can be a lazy piece of trash. You can be the hardest working person on the planet. Same outcome. 
you're you're never going to get the same start as a person next to you. There's going to be rich people that have an easier start than you. There's going to be poor people that have a, that have to work harder to get out of their situation. So the unfortunate situation with some minorities like blacks, Hispanics, they grow up in really poor areas. They grow up in areas with gangs. They grow up areas with violence. They grow up areas with drugs. And there's poor white people that grow up in those areas too. So it's obviously going to make it harder for you to get out of that environment, seeing all the bad influences, how, how it's normalized around you. But the thing is, there's these, the thing called, uh, well, up until recently, there was affirmative action for college, which they got rid of, but now it's fairer. Uh, there's still affirmative action when it comes to jobs. So black people are still more likely to get hired for certain positions than white people at, at jobs. And in reality, if you're denied a job as a black person, you could probably sue. Like you could pull the race card in any situation you can, and especially in today's society. Oh my God, yeah. But you're not, the, like, black people, that's the thing where they try to say Republicans are evil, right? There are some Republicans that are evil. I genuinely think that. But and those are usually the lazy uh, establishment ones that only care about themselves. Republicans want to treat everyone equally. You know, there's, they don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic, Indian, all those things. They don't care. Everyone should have equal opportunity. I agree with equal opportunity. You shouldn't have equal outcome. That is just never going to be a realistic thing. And the, the, this, them pushing this, is, it's just never going to happen. And him going to an HBCU and pandering and saying, vote for me, even though I've been making your lives hell for the past three or four years, with all the expensive cost of living and everything going along with that, but still vote for me because there's a D next to my name. It's ne it's not going to work anymore. You, you're going to keep losing support and you're going to have to actually show some answers to all the problems you've been creating, which you haven't. All you're doing is trying to lock up your political opponent. You're trying to use the media to paint a pretty picture of what you're doing when you're not doing anything good. And in reality, we all know Biden's not making the calls here. It's someone else. He doesn't have the mental capacity to do it. So it's really like who's running the country? You know, it's who's really running the country? It's not this man. He's a puppet. Who's really running the country? And I don't think we're ever going to get an actual answer for that. But we can uh, vote in 2024 and vote for the right man that should be president who will actually fix our country. And I think he will keep gaining the black support along with the support of everyone else. And I think he will become our president again. 45 and 47. Hasn't been done since uh, Garfield, I think. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about this whole uh, pandering thing and Trump supposedly saying the N-word coming out 20 years later after it's two elections he's already gone through. Seems kind of like a made-up story, don't you think? Uh, like and subscribe to all my channels down below. I'll catch you later next time.